Holy crap, look at this mess of cables. Look at that, look at that. It's, it's not done yet. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. I hope you're all doing well. I'm excited for this video because this is going to be the first time that I really detail all the changes that have happened here in the control room. Now this has been a little while in the making here because it was all the way back in January when the 32 channel Trident went in. Absolutely loving that, this console sounds amazing and it took us a little while to get all the peripherals put together. As it turns out, right across the street from the studio is a company that builds studios and really nice ones. It's owned by Brad Keeler, it's called Progressive Design. They do amazing work. I mean, if you ever see the studios they built, holy crap, they're nice. Well, I got to know him over the last year, so I talked to him and he had a few of his guys come over and we kind of detailed what I wanted. I drew it out chicken scratch and really horrible. They kind of, they drew it up in the computer, made it look good. We made a couple tweaks to it and then they built them. Then we walked them across the street and installed them. So what I want to do right now is just run you through some of that process because I did get a little video of that. And then at the end, I'll kind of go through some of the details of where things are, why, and just show you some of, uh, some of the new stuff that's in here. So let's take a look at how all this started. It is time for all of this to change, except for the console. Holy crap, we have <laughs> successfully removed the racks. And as you can see, there is a ton of dust and a fair amount of Delilah hair. And here's the other side. So this side, I still have, these racks are coming out, but I have a fair amount of cabling still to pull there and then a little bit of cleaning to do. So I told her it was time to get to work. And here's what happened. Putting the second rack together because it was too big to fit through the door. So we had to take it apart to get it in. This one is a double. So the left side, here's the single. And there's 12 spaces on the top, so six on each of the slants, and then there's another 10 on the bottom. You need me to hold that? No, it's, it's a lot easier now that the, all the screws are, since it's already been put once before. It's almost put back together. Let me see. There are more. You good? Oh, yeah, it's good. Well, I yeah, well, we have it. Yeah, it should be there. Good? It went in good? Mm -hmm. Nice. Screw this at first. Um, what's it called? The um, guys did a great job. Let's see if I get an angle where I can actually see what's going on here. There we go. Oh. Cut holes for all the cabling. There's one on each side, so I'm still gonna have one rack over here so all that cabling can run cleanly through. And you see over here, I've got two in the middle there and then one on this side for all that cabling to come back. Okay, here's where we are. I'm really happy the guys did a great job building these. Now everything is in place. All the effects gear over there, my compressors, some EQs. I've got all this extra room now so I get to clean up all the hard drives around the, the video machine. But now that I've got everything where I want it, I think pretty much anyway, I'm gonna start running all the power and getting that dialed in. So now that it's all there, let me back up a little bit so I can get a better shot. We are starting to see what it's going to be. Holy crap, look at this mess of cables. Look at that, look at that. It's, it's not done yet. Look at that, look at that. Look at that, look at that. This is all, every, this is all cable I pulled out yesterday before we installed the racks. It's like, holy crap. And some of it is way longer than it needs to be. And that's what I'm gonna start cutting down now. Once I, well, once I get to this part of it and we're gonna cut to length and I'm gonna redo a lot of repinning, man. It's gonna be nuts. 
So there you saw a little bit of the process, my embarrassing mess of cables. <laughs> that was really embarrassing, but I had to show it. Most of that cabling was cut to be able to move things around later. And if you've seen any photos of the studio over the last four or five years, you know it's changed at least four or five times. Stuff just keeps getting moved around. No more of that. Finally, things are where I want them. We have expansion ideas built in as we need more space. I even have some built into these racks, which I'll go over in just a second. But I'm, I'm happy. Everything's cleaner and it's been nice to work with everything kind of within arm's reach. And most of the gear that I use on every session is kind of up above, up with the console, which is nice. The mix bus stuff is all to the right. And it was there before, but now it's all facing up. It's actually easier to kind of get to and move and I can stay inside the speakers. Although that stuff doesn't typically change a whole lot. It's wired so I can use it when mixing and when tracking. So it's going from the master fader to the C1, the SSL ultraviolet to the Rupert Neve 542 tape emulators directly into my Apogee Rosetta. Comes out of the Apogee Rosetta and this is all in the patch bay. Well, the C1 ultraviolet and the 542s are hardwired. Short cables, boom, boom, boom. So they're always in that position out of the 542s, it goes to the Apogee Rosetta. And then that comes back up here, right here on the console on the two track. So when I'm mixing, I have the print laptop over there that's hooked to the Rosetta, which is Firewire 800, it's old. But it sounds amazing and I'm not changing that. So when I'm mixing, all I have to do is set that laptop up to see the Rosetta and then it's feeding the two track. I just turn that on, boom. And that's what I'm listening to. What's coming back from all of that gear. I can do the same thing when tracking, and we do this a lot. All I have to do is flip the Rosetta into analog mode, and it automatically feeds the two track. So once we get sounds up and going, and we know we're happy with everything, I can kick that on. We get a little master bus compression, a little EQ, that sort of thing, so it's exciting to listen to when it comes back off the speakers. And then that's how I print all the rough mixes as well. Also on this side, all my external mic pre's, which I don't have a lot. This thing sounds awesome. Trident rocks, and I use that most of the time. But I do have a Heritage HA73, the two channel. I also have a pair of Tone Lux up here, and I have my two Overstayer Pre's down in the bottom rack. The Heritage is on top because I use that EQ a lot when mixing, so it's easy for me to get to when it's on top there, which is nice. It also gives me, I have six channels of direct ins if I need them, you know, bass, keys, or something if we're in here in the control room. It's all boom, boom, boom right there. I don't have to patch something in. I have 48 ins going into the computer, so those channels go right into the I.O. and directly into Logic or Pro Tools, whatever we're working in, which is more often than not Logic. Then all my 500 gear is up there. The SSL stuff gets used all the time. So does the Tone Lux. I use the A-Range a lot while tracking. The IGS Tube Core, holy crap, that thing is cool. That gets used a lot as well. So all that stuff's within arm's reach, which is nice. Then back over here is pretty much the compressor rack, except for the 8803 EQ, the Neve EQ. And then I have two radial XTCs, one mono and a new stereo one that just went in. So now I have the ability to use a lot of my guitar pedals <laughs> during mixing. And I can do some of the stereo stuff easily too. The couple other additions that we've put in to make some of our sessions easier. You can see right up here, we have a shotgun mic mounted. This is an Audio-Technica shotgun mic and these two lights that are actually lighting up the Atom speakers right now. And then there's a GoPro on top of the monitor as well. All of that we put in to help with some of the videos, especially when we're sitting at the console. And when we're doing the songs from the studio, we can have that GoPro so we can get everybody sitting right here. And if anybody's in the back, you can see everybody as well. That microphone is plugged in, so it's always capturing what's going on in the room, as well as labs and other things now. So that's, that's fairly new, because we're trying to get our audio for all those episodes uh, as good as it possibly can be. The other thing I literally just put in in the last week is the new system for my remote mixing, which I've been using the Audio Movers plugin, the Listen To plugin, I've been using for a while, but I just put in these tiny little speakers that are right next to the monitor. That's hooked to Zoom or Skype or whatever I'm using, and that's so I can monitor what the artists are 
saying to me. And they can talk in real time over mixes and I can make changes. Might be a little hard to see right now. There's a little Logitech camera that has a built-in mic. That's what I use for them to see me and for them to hear me as well. They can see a little bit of the board. So if we're making moves, they can see all that. And I can stay focused like this. I'm not looking one way or the other for a laptop or I used to have the iPad would sit right here and the battery would die and I have to run the power cable over the console. It just drove me insane. So now, got the camera up there with the mic. I have two little speakers. All of that is just for the remote mixing or any Zoom calls, Skype calls, whatever. And then the print laptop, that's what has the listen to plug in and that sends out the super high quality audio. If you remember in the previous setup, all my effects gear was right here to the right of the console. Now that's back over here, which is actually to my left when I'm mixing. That's where the Fostex 8-track reel-to-reel is. It's also where I have some expansion. If I need more space for outboard gear, that's where it's gonna go. I know at some point this six-space 500 rack that has the ultraviolet and the Neves and the Tone Lux pre's is gonna get swapped out for another Trident 10-space because there is another set of mic pre's I would like to add in the 500 series as well as a couple more outboard 500 pieces of gear. So what I did, Knowing that that's gonna happen, I have three extra channels open for mic pre's that are built into those pre-snakes that will come up on the patch bays where I have all of my other mic pre's. The same thing with a few extra pieces of outboard gear. I have, I think, four extra channels in there right now. So I could add a few more 500 pieces of gear. I could even add, you know, another rack piece of gear down here without having to add any more cabling without having to do any more snakes, no soldering, no crimping, none of that. That's in there waiting because I know it's coming. I even know what some of that gear is going to be. It's just gonna be a while till we get there. So I decided to build that in. That's it for this side of things. So now let's go over there and take a look at the video rig. This is where we do all our video editing and it's the live streaming rig as well. We have our Blackmagic 8 camera ATEM switch and the Ultra Studio HD. We also have down here on the floor, you can't see it, but probably roughly about 40 terabytes of hard drive storage that goes fast <laughs> when you're doing video. So the switch software is up here. We've got Final Cut for all the editing that we do. This is also where we run OBS, which is what pushes out to YouTube. And there's another monitor that we use that pulls up here that has all the cameras on it from the Black Magic when we're doing our live streaming so we can see all our angles all on one monitor and it makes it real easy to do the switching. We also have a little Focusrite Claret hooked up here so we can have headphones running if we need to. This is also patched into the patch bay over there and so is the Blackmagic ATEM switch. So we can send all our audio from the console over to the switch. We can send audio to and from the Claret, so basically to and from this machine and then any internal routing, we use the loopback software so we can route stuff wherever we need it to go. Zoom, OBS, Skype, whatever we happen to be doing. So that's it. That's the whole new setup in the control room. I'm really happy with how everything turned out. I like the new layout. I like the vibe and I'm excited to get back to creating a lot of new content for the rest of the year. Speaking of content, I need to go because I have to edit this video so I can get it put out. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Happy recording. We'll see you in the next video.